I'm from Wales. <laughs> Wales, that great rugby team. You know? Okay, I don't know if you, have, you follow rugby. But um, that's, that's this sport in Wales, rugby. So I was born in Wales, my parents are Jamaican. I live in Reading. And I've come to Bilston. <laughs> but um, I've travelled around the world. I used to live in America, in the deep south, Alabama, and New York City. And I've, I've preached in Poland and Germany. And I'm here in Bilston. So what am I going to talk to you about? Because really, people these days, you can't talk to them. Do you know what I mean? You can't talk, especially young people, you can't talk to young people, right? Because they know what's going on, isn't it? <laughs> okay, this, this, this sister said, yes, young people know what's going on. This young person didn't say nothing. <laughs> All right. <laughs> but you know, it's hard to talk to people these days because they know right from wrong. And people are quite, you know, you don't want, is that the mum? Are you okay with them telling you what to do? Okay, all right. He better be, says his mum. So what am I going to talk to you about? Do you know what? I'm going to ask the Lord to talk to you. Right? Because he's the best person to get to. Because when God talks to you, you have to listen. Right? You can't ignore it. So today is music day. And, um, you know, I was told the theme for the day is something called Sing Them Over Again to Me. Have you ever heard that song? Yes. What are the lyrics? What are the words? <laughs> Sing them over again to me. <laughs> Let me. <laughs> Wonderful words of life. What comes next? <laughs> words of life. <laughs> Teach me. <laughs> Do you know who wrote that song? Did anyone know who wrote that song? Who? B. Crosby? No. Oh, no, not, not. no, no, no. Or oh, Fanny Crosby? No, 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 no. Listen, it was a man called Philip Bliss. Yes. Right? Philip Bliss, listen to this, listen to this. Listen to this. Philip Bliss, right? He was only 38 when he died. How old are you? Um, 11. 11. He was 38. 38. He was on a train with his wife. Beautiful couple, young couple. Do you want to get married now? That's not a decision I want to make now. Oh, really? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. 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 Where is your mother? Is your mother in here? Oh, no. Is your dad here? No. Who do you know in here? Yeah, yeah. Man, come here, come here, come here, come here. <laughs> What's your name? What's your name? Conroy. Conroy, you're special, man. <laughs> you are special, right? Good man, good man. Man, I love that answer. Yes. Right. And you know what? Some of us should have, should have stuck with that answer. <laughs> yeah, some of us should have stuck with that answer. But listen, Philip Bliss was 38 years old when he died. He's on the train with his wife. And they're traveling in a snowstorm over a hundred years ago, 140 odd years ago, they're traveling in a snowstorm in this train. And, and, and the train has two engines, two big carriages at the front of the engine. They're traveling in this train and they're going over a bridge. <clears throat> Below the bridge there's water, there's a river. And it's a bad snowstorm and all of a sudden the first carriage, the first engine gets over the bridge. But the rest of the train... The bridge collapses and the whole, it just drops all the way 76 feet into the water, the snowy, icy water. And it's one of those all time trains. And the train bursts into flames. And Philip Bliss, who wrote this song, Philip Bliss managed to scramble out of the train, scrambled up the bank, got to the bank. And he looks around and his wife is not there. And, and, and when he looks, he sees fire. And he rushes in, his wife is trapped under the seats, the metal seats. And he runs in and he tries to pull the seats off his wife, but they can't go. So he stays with his wife. And he dies. And they never even found any bodies. His body or his wife, just like Grenfell. Mm. Tower, gone. But he wrote that song. What was that song? Sing them over again to me. Wonderful words of life. 
Let me more of their beauty see wonderful words of life. Another verse says, sweetly echo the gospel call. Wonderful words of life. Offer what? Pardon. And what? Cease to who? Wonderful words of life. And the next verse says what? Jesus, only Savior. He sanctified forever. Okay. When my Philip Bliss, he died when he was 38. He wrote another song, you know, and the song is called Hallelujah, What a Savior. Does anyone know that song? Yeah. How does it sound? Man of Sorrows. Wondrous name. Spotless Son of God who came. Ruined sinners to reclaim. Hallelujah, what a Savior. The title of my mini sermon, mini. Yes. The title of the sermon is called You Are Born to Sing. Did you know that? You are born to sing. You know, inside here, you have something called vocal cords. We all have them. You know what? Vocal cords. Do you sing at home? You don't sing? Can you sing any songs? Yeah. What's your favorite song? No, you don't have to sing it, just tell me your favorite song. Tis so sweet. Say it again. Tis so sweet to trust in Jesus. Bless me, Lord. Is this mom and dad? No. Mom. Okay. <laughs> Bless the Lord. Tis so sweet to trust. It's your favorite song. How old are you? Eight. Bless the Lord. Tis so sweet to trust in Jesus. Just to take him at his word. Yes. Just to rest upon his promise. Yes, sir. Just to know. So says the Lord, did you know that if you hear God's voice, it will change your life? Yes. Did you know that? Yes. Yeah, I'm telling you now, let me tell you how it works. This is how it works. Let me give you an example of a man who needed to hear God's voice. The man had done badness, that means wickedness, in his life. He done wickedness in his life. He done so much wickedness that he couldn't walk anymore. Now, I don't know if that was, to me it sounds like it was a kind of a badness with man and woman, you know, we kept doing things he shouldn't do. Okay, some of you understand what I'm talking about, right? He, he kept doing things he shouldn't do, and he got an illness, and he couldn't walk anymore. Well, he couldn't work, and so he ended up laying on his back, depending on people to help him out. He heard Jesus was in town. At Bilston. And he said to his friends, Take me to Jesus. They took him to Jesus. And when Jesus saw this man, you know, his, his muscle had wasted away because he couldn't walk. And he was laying on his back. And he looked into Jesus' eyes. Jesus looked at him. Jesus knew all about the man. He knew his lifestyle. He knew all the mistakes he'd made. And Jesus just looked at him and Jesus just said, Your sins are forgiven you. Your sins. Forget about everybody else in Bilston. Forget about everybody else in the church. He just said to the man, your sins are forgiven you. You know, the man lay on his back and he felt the weight of guilt roll off his head like water off a duck's back. Just oh, gone. And the man is laid there in total bliss. That means he was happy. He lay there thinking, yes, I don't care if I live or die, I'm free. I'm free, I'm free, I'm free. That's why Jesus came here, to give peace and power to individuals. So people who know how to sing, you are born to sing. You are born to have joy in your life. Oh, yes. I'm coming to the end of my sermon. Oh, yes, yes, yes. Because really, we don't need to talk a lot, really, do we? We don't need to talk a lot. When you talk to your son, you only talk once, right? Well, that's the plan, right? You just say, you just say to the child, wash your face, brush your teeth. You don't have to talk more than once. Sometimes we do have to talk more than once, right? Sometimes, didn't I tell you to brush your teeth? Didn't I tell you to... You, you know, that's how it goes sometimes. No, it's okay. It's okay. <laughs> all right, all right. But, you know, I was stubborn. I was very stubborn. Yes, Herbert said he knew me 
when I was 15. It was actually 14. And now I am 54. How many years is that? 14 and 54. Yes. That's, um, 40. Yes, well done. 40 years ago. Herbert's known me for 40 years. That's like a prison sentence, isn't it? 40 years. <laughs> sentence of 40 years. He's known me that long. But you know, here's the amazing thing. God knew us before we were born. Amen. And Amen. destined us for great things. For great things. Mm. Great things. We were born to sin. We were born to live for God. Amen. Yes, amen. amen. You know, um, I was at a college, uh, it's a religious college, it's called Newbold College. It's uh, owned by the Seventh-day Adventist Church. It's in um, down the south. And I was there a few days ago, and um, I was talking to a, the librarian, the librarian. And the librarian said, oh, um, do you know this man called Harry Leonard? I said, yes, I remember Harry Leonard. Harry Leonard was a, a teacher at Newbold, a history teacher, very sharp brain, intelligent man, wrote books and all that kind of stuff, you know. But he's now about 80 something years of age. You know, he's, he's, he's um, getting quite feeble. That's what the librarian told me. You know, kind of, yeah, kind of feeble. But um, I remember when Harry Leonard was vibrant, you know, vibrant and strong. And I said to the librarian, isn't it strange how in life we grow, we're so strong, you know, and then we grow old and then, then we're looking towards the end, you know, towards the grave. And I said to the lady, to the librarian, there has to be something more to life, isn't it? Yeah. Than just eating food, you know, going to school, work, coming home, going to Tesco, Morrison, buying your food, cooking little, all the, and then finally it's time to die. There's got to be more to life than that. Yes. Who is the young lady who read the scripture reading? Where are you? The young lady who read the scripture reading. She's outside there. Do you remember where the scripture reading was from? Psalm, Psalm 92. Psalm 92. Yeah. Are you quick? Psalm 92. And she said, she said, it's, she read from the psalm, which said, it's a good thing to give what? It's a good thing to what? Yeah, to sing to the Lord. It's a good thing. Anyone ever played a, 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 done a jigsaw puzzle? Anyone done a jigsaw puzzle? Isn't it great when it all fits together? Did you know that you are part of God's jigsaw puzzle? And did you know that you'll never fit together until you fit yourself back to God? Amen. You know that? No matter how twisted your life may be, because that's what jigsaw puzzles are like, isn't it? Jigsaw puzzles got all twisty curved sides, edges. No matter how twisted it is, God have a twist to fit your twist. Amen. Yes. Amen. And when you fit into God twist, <laughs> did you know you're gonna twist together with God? Yes. You and God will make music. It's called harmony. Because you are born to sing. Born to sing. But I was stubborn. I was stubborn. Running from God. Running from God. And it took a woman who I've never met in my life to walk up to me. In 2003. <clears throat> to walk up to me. And she just came up to me and she, she just said this. What doest thou here? <laughs> For those of you who don't know, that's a phrase in the Bible. What doest thou here? When Elijah was in a cave, running from Jezebel, but also trying to find God. Because the cave he was in was on Mount Sinai. And Mount Sinai is where Moses met God. And God came to the cave. And I can just imagine God looking what doest thou here, Elijah? And when the woman told me this, it made me think, Pharaoh, why are you running from God? Why are you ducking and diving and hiding from God? 15 years of your life running from God, just doing your own thing. Why are you running, man? Why are you running, sister? 
Two weeks later, the same woman met me again. I, I'd never seen her before, you know. The woman just met me again. The woman walked up to me, and the woman just went like this. In the town, in the town area in Reading. She opened her arms like this. Her body twisted to the side. And she said, your sins are already forgiven. They're already forgiven. Like that, you know. And years before, I said to myself, Forrest, how can I come back to church? Look at all the things I've done. What are people going to think when I come back? <coughs> I just said to God in my head, I didn't even close my eyes or pray or go to a church. And she just said that like an answer to the prayer. Then she met me for the third time. Mm -hmm. And this time, she said to me, <laughs> where's the woman she was? <laughs> <laughs> So you haven't come back. But you will come back, you know. And you may not like how you come back. And when she said that to me, I said, Lord, I remember coffins coming back to church. Down the aisle, they came back. But too late. And I said, Lord, I'm not coming back in a coffin. And I went out and I bought myself a suit and I came back to church. Yes. In 2003, I walked through the back door. The preacher stopped the service. And he said, somebody has walked in here who I know. Does anybody know Forrest Douglas? A few people turned. And I, that was no problem for me, you know. Because when I'm out in Greece or somewhere dancing on a table top with my alcohol and my togo wrapped around me, I don't care who saw me. So why should I be ashamed when I come into church? The place of safety. The place of love and warmth. The place of reformation and restoration. Why should I be ashamed? So I stood up and I put up my hand. And I said, I'm back. <laughs> you know, we are born to sing. The children of Israel, they got down to a place with a massive mountain on this side, massive mountain on that side, big old sea in front of them. And they're like, huh, what now? And behind them, soldiers coming to slaughter them. And God says to Moses, the voice, yes, but you have been a... step forward. Go forward, Moses, go forward. Go forward, Moses, go forward. And all these frightened people, followers of Moses, <laughs> they stepped out towards water. Towards water. They couldn't climb mountains because they were shepherds for over 400 years. That's what their history told them. Their DNA was like, you know what? We're not mountaineers. But God opened the water and they went forward. When they got to the other side, by the way, this is Exodus 14 and Exodus 15. When they got to the other side, they sang a song. It's called the Song of Moses. Wind it back, wind it back, wind it back. Mountains on this side, mountains on that side, big sea in front, enemy coming to slaughter them. They had a choice. Am I going to step forward? I heard God's voice say, go forward. Am I going to step forward or am I going to stay here with my fear? God is saying, I want you to sing a song. The song is called Moses' song. It's a song of victory. Is a song that reflects on how God saves you and keeps you and transforms you. Yes. Go forward. Yes. Or am I going to stay right here with the mountains and the enemy and the fear? So we have a decision to make. Amen. Are you going to step forward and follow the Lord 100%? Are you going to say, Lord, I give you my life again. I'm sorry for my sinful ways. It doesn't surprise God. He's seen it all before. Because you were born to sing. That's the end of my ser sermon. Thank you so much for listening. And we're going to sing one song. One sat alone beside the highway begging. His eyes were blind, the light he could not see. He clutched his rags and shivered in the shadow.
Then Jesus came and made the darkness flee. Unclean, unclean, the leper cried in torment. The deaf, the dumb, in helplessness stood near. The demon raged, for he had got his victim. Then Jesus came and cast out every fear. When Jesus comes, the tempter's power is broken. When Jesus comes, the fears are wiped away. He takes the gloom and fills the light with glory for all is changed when Jesus comes to stay so folk today have found the Savior able they could not conquer their passion their lust or their sin their feeble hearts had left them sad and lonely. Then Jesus came and dwelt himself within. When Jesus comes, the tempter's power is broken. When Jesus comes, the fears are wiped away. He takes your gloom and he fills your life with glory. For all is changed when Jesus comes to stay. When Jesus comes, the tempter's power is broken when Jesus comes the fears are wiped away he takes the gloom and he fills your life with glory for all is changed when Jesus comes to stay. Tells of his love in the book he has given. Wonderful things in the Bible I see. But this is the deal. That Jesus loves me. No, I didn't say us. That Jesus loves me. Yes, left heaven, rolled up his sleeves, came down to earth as a baby, grew as a young man, died on a cruel cross, came out of a dark tomb, lived forever to transform lives. So I am so glad that Jesus loves me. You know, sometimes people on Facebook don't love me. People on Snapchat don't always love me. <coughs> but I am glad that Jesus loves me. Amen. And you and I were born to see. We're going to sing the final hymn. What's the final hymn? When you saw the final hymn, whatever the final hymn is. Okay. Okay. And, and I'm going to make an appeal. While we're singing that final hymn, I'm going to ask if somebody has heard God's voice speak to their heart, forget about everybody else, because it's only about you. 
If you've heard God's voice speak to your heart and you want to commit, recommit your life to the Lord. Lord, I'm so sorry for running away. Lord, I want to start again. Lord, I just want to recommit my life. Come down the front here and I'm going to lift you up in prayer to the Lord. But you know, show the Lord you mean business and come on down. And by the way, the song that I was just quoting, I am so glad Jesus loves me, that was written by Philip Bliss.